Hey, and welcome back. I'm Mr. Harper Smith. Today we're talking about factoring where a is greater than zero. Here in a second, I'll explain a little bit more what that, sorry, greater than zero, a is greater than one. I'll explain here in a second a little bit more what that means. Let's just go over some factoring for a moment though, okay? So when we're factoring, <clears throat> it means that we're finding the greatest common factor between the two, and we're taking out the difference. So here in this case, what is the same on both of these monomials? Well, they both have a six. So what you're able to do is you're able to take out that six that is the same and leave the a and b that are different. You'd still get the same answer. For instance, if a was two, six times two plus, um, let's say b is three, six times three, 12 plus 18 is 30. Well, down here, two plus three is five, six times five is 30 as well. You get the same answer, okay? Factoring is just a way to change up the equation a little bit. Here on this one, what's the same? Well, they both have a B. So kind of like over here, they both had the six. I was able to bring the six out, <clears throat> leave that which is different inside so the A plus C stays on the inside, B comes to the outside, these are equivalent. They are the same equation. Let's look at one that's a little bit different though. This one here, it looks like you already have parentheses and stuff going on. But what if we just think of those parentheses, which are the same as B or a C maybe, maybe C would be better. Just think of them as a random letter C, okay? Well, you have AC plus BC what is the same between them? They both have this C. So I can transfer that C out and the A and the B get left behind. But the C is really X plus two. So the answer here would really be X plus two times A plus B. You see, and hey, that's starting to look like the factoring that we were doing last time. And it's because it is. Now let's do some real examples of what we're doing today. Here we go. So now we've got two equations. Last time, if you remember, there was always just an x squared. There was never anything in front of the x squared. Today, there will be, okay? We still use the x game, but instead of the 10 going on top and the 11 going on the bottom, what we're doing today is you actually have to multiply those two together. Last time, when it was just a one, one times 10, it's just 10. So we just did the 10. Now there's a three, three times 10, you get 30 and 11. What two numbers multiply to be 30, but add to be 11? Well, we go through and think. I know five and six, we've got three and 10. There's a whole bunch of others. Which of those add to be 11? Five and six. So we've got our five and the six. What this five and six, I'm gonna do with it I'm gonna split this 11x into a 5x and a 6x. So that, gonna, that will give me 3x squared plus 5x plus 6x plus 10. It's still the same exact equation, is it not? It is. This 11 just became 5 plus 6 instead of 11. Well, here's what we're gonna do. I now have two binomials, okay? What can I factor out of this side? Well, they both have an x. So that'd give me x, 3x plus 5. And over here, I can factor out a 2, because they both are multiples of 2. That'd give me a 3x plus 5. Ooh, now here's the way to check if you did it right. If you get the same binomial, if they're the same binomial, that means that you did this correctly up till now. Okay, if they are different, it means that on one of these, you could have simplified or factored out a little bit more, okay? So, now, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna factor out my three x plus fives. Three x plus five. And what's left if I factor out the three x plus fives? X plus two. Let's try this one over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Three times 16 is 48. What two numbers multiply to be 48, but add 
to be 16 as a middle number. Um, let's see here. We've got, ooh, I think I know what they are. You can go through, make your list, 48 and 1, um, 2 and 24. I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be 4 and 12, though. So they multiply to be 48. They add to be 16. So that's going to give me 3x squared plus 4x plus 12x plus 16. Okay? Now, it doesn't matter which order you put those in. It doesn't matter. So on this first piece, I need to be looking, all right, what can I factor out? I'm going to factor out an x. That's going to give me x and 3x plus 4. Over here, I can factor out a 4. They're both divisible by 4. If you just do 2, you're going to get the wrong answer. So 4 is going to leave me with 3x plus 4. I factor out the 3x plus 4s. What am I left with? X plus 4. Ta -da! That is your final answer. Let's try another couple. All right, here, let's try these ones now. So I've got 5 times 6. It's going to give me 30. Remember, I multiply the first and the last number. I want to multiply to be 30. I want to add to be 31. What two numbers multiply to be 30 but add to be 31? Well, it's going to be 30. And what? Right? So let's see here. We've got, let's do 5x squared plus 30x plus 1x plus 6. Again, it doesn't matter what order you do these in. You will get the same exact answer either way. I could have done 1 and 30 instead. All right. Now, I need to think, all right, if I'm going to factor out of both of these, I can factor a 5 and an x out, can't I? 5x, 5x. So 5x would leave me with x plus 6. Over here, there's not really anything I can factor out. x plus 6. Ooh, they're the same. That means I did it right. What number should technically go in front of this? Probably a 1, because technically I can factor a 1 out. All right, I factor out my x plus 6s. And that leaves me with 5x plus 1. Let's try the same thing over here. 5 times 28. Ooh, that's going to be 28, 5, 40, 140. So what two numbers multiply to be 140 but add to be 27? Uh, oh, I know. Okay. You can go through list a bunch of factors of 140. 20 and 7 multiply to be 140, but add to be 27, okay? So we've got 20 and seven. It doesn't matter what side you put them on. Over here, we did the big number first. Let's do the small number first. 5x squared plus 7x plus 20x plus 28. Okay, again, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. Over there, we did the big one first. Let's do the small one first this time. All right, I'm looking at this side. What can I factor out? And just the x. Over here, what can I factor out? Um, a 2, a 4, the both divisible by 4. I think a 4 is the biggest number. 5x plus 7. Remember, they should be the same. Are they the same? Yes. Perfect. That means I factored correctly on both of these. So let's take my 5x plus 7s. Factor them out. Now what's left? X plus 4. Ta -da! That parenthesis there is kind of in a funky place. Cool, cool. All right, I want you guys to try the next two on your own. All right, these are the two I want you to try on your own. Pause the video. All right, you should pause the video. You should have your answers now. Let's give it a try. We've got 5 times 2 is 10 and 7. What numbers multiply to be 10 but add to be 7? They multiply to be 10 and add to be 7. So that's going to give me 5x squared plus, let's do 5x plus 2x plus 2. 
Well, what can I factor out of here? 5x, that leaves me with x plus 1. Over here, what can I factor out? Well, I can factor out a 2. That leaves me with, I should be left with x plus 1. If I factor out a 2, that's all I'm left with. Okay? So, let's see here. I've got the 5x and the 2, x plus 1, x plus 1. So, x plus 1 and 5x plus 2. Now, if I would have switched these, the 5x and the 2x, all that would have happened here is these transfers would have switched. The x plus 1 would have been on this side, 5x plus 2 would have been on that side. That's the only difference that we would have seen. Okay? Let's try this one here. 3x times, let's see, 3 times 4 is 12. 8, which numbers multiply by 12 to add to be 8? 6 and 2. Uh, let's put the 2 on the left side. Let's do this one first. 3x squared, you know, let's do the 6x plus 2x plus 4. Okay? Again, it doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer either way. Here, we're going to factor out a 3x. That's going to be x plus 2 plus 2 x plus 2. Hey, we got the same binomial. That means that we did the factoring right. Good, good. Let's bring our x plus 2s over. That gives me x plus 2 times 3x plus 2. Ta -da! All right, if you need a couple more examples, talk to your teacher. I'm sure they're more than happy to give you a couple more. One more to help you a little bit more. Um, if you feel like you got it, perfect. Try the assignment. Harper Smith, signing off for now.